how to create a quick spherical design in Affinity Photo. First thing to do is to create a document. It's got a document here and I'm using the elliptical marquee tool. I'm just going to go over there and I'm just going to create a very quick design. Now you'll see there's no layers at the moment, so this whole thing will not work. You need a layer. So go to layer and new layer. So now you've got a pixel layer. You can fill that. So edit and fill. So that fills this pixel design just in this selection. And I'm going to go with a color um, red. Red's good as anything. So just select that and apply. Now what I want, I want a transparent background. And by default, it doesn't seem to do that. However, what you can do, document and transparent background. So you've got a transparent background now. What I want to do is add a 3D effect to this design here. I can go over here to layers, so you can go to view and oops, down to studio and you've got layers. So you can see the layers panel there. Just go down to FX, just down the bottom. Once you've done that, go to 3D and there's a radius option here. And you can push that up. Now this doesn't look particularly great at the moment because you've only got like 100. But you can override this slider. It's really odd in the sense that it doesn't allow you to maybe change a scale or something, it just stops at 100. So you can put like 500. So you've got 500. So you're actually going something a bit more. Unfortunately, if you just go there, it goes back to 100, which is not very good. I think personally, if you put 500, it should automatically readjust itself, the range, because you obviously clearly want 500. You don't want 100. So maybe 800. And it goes up to 1024. That's max. And you can modify the other settings if you want to change that. Obviously, very subtle differences there. But once you've got this, you can see you're already near enough. got a 3D design. So you've got this here. And what you can do, you can rotate that around. You can also create more complex designs. So you've got this light source. You've got one, just one at the moment. But there's a bit here, add. So click there to add. Now you've got two. And you've got two light sources. And you obviously work with the second one. Well, it's obviously the first. But you can change the color. So maybe go for green or that. Or whatever, you can just try out different colors and you think, oh, I think that works better than another one. So once you've got that, you've got two, and you can manipulate that design. And you can see you've got another light there. Maybe blue isn't the best. You just gotta find one that you are happy with. So once you've got that, you can change obviously the ambient there. You can go move that down, spec, you can put that down if you want. May push that up so you can see more of the light or diffuse. So you can vary it so it's not sort of just one type of lighting effect. Once you've done that, you can close it. So you've got your design there. Now, what you can also do, you can crop it. So I'm going to crop this design. Now, of course, you've got to find, depends on the tools, of course, because you might have customized your tools. You don't customize, view down here, you've got all the various customizations. So you may not have exactly the same set of tools. So I'm just going to crop this. So select the crop tool. And I'm just going to make it fairly. So it's, and I could crop it a bit better than that. Now I'm not certain if there is a feature, and I have yet to discover that, if there's a, a crop to selection would be nice. However, I don't know if there is one. I haven't seen it. Maybe someone could put comments saying, yes, it's in this or that section, I would love to know, because it would be useful to be able to crop it to a selection. So you've got this design. Now I want to save this, but I don't want to save it because I don't want to save it to the standard format. I want to save it to a PNG format, because you can use PNG format in other applications. So you've got their size there, and PNG just selected that one there, the first one, because that allows for the transparency. So then I can export. You can always go click more as well. There's lots of other options that are available if you want to use those. Then export. Just quickly export that. 
it takes a few seconds to produce. Now you just type in something like two or one or some number. Of course, there's always a panel that's always in the way. Save. So it's saved now. I'm just going to create another quick document. Maybe a slightly bigger document. Just go from there. And then once you've done that, I'm going to bring in a pattern. That pattern that I've just created. So what I'm going to do, layer and go down to new fill layer. New fill layer and you, nothing seems to have happened. Well, there is a layer now. So if I go to layers, you can actually see the fill layer there. And along this top, you've got fill and you've got solid. And I'm just going to go for bitmap. And then I'm just going to go for PNG. And that's the file. You can now see, see the design there. You can see the transparency. So open. And obviously opens to a really crazy default. I've never understood this feature of you'd think it would default to the size of the actual imported PNG file. Weirdly, it just defaults to this very odd looking design. Now you can then zoom in and you can move those around and resize it. And you can modify the things. So you can go to wrap, you've got mirror, so you can see it turns around. Now I'm just going to go for wrap. We can do repeat, which doesn't seem to be much use there. So wrap. What you can then do, of course, it's just a layer. So you can go to layer and you can duplicate. Now you can see at this point, nothing changed because it's on top of each other. And then you can just move that. And of course, you can resize it. Don't have to keep the same size. So you can create a far more complex design. And of course, what you can do, because it's just an effect there, you can rasterize it. You also add live filter layers, etc. So you want to go to layer, new live filter layer, and maybe I'm just going to go say for blur, Gaussian blur. And you'll see when I do that, nothing happens. No use whatsoever at this point. The reason being, you're just applying the blur to the layer. There is nothing on the layer as far as the system is working. So what you need to do, slightly annoying, is to undo that Gaussian blur. And what you need to do is just go to rasterize it. So layer and rasterize, or we could just, of course, just merge and all those sort of things. I don't want to do that. Just want to rasterize it. I want to turn it into a pixel layer. Now, as a pixel layer, I can apply those effects. So layer and new layer. For, unfortunately, you can't change the scale. So once you've done that, you've converted it into a pixel, that's it. So blur and now Gaussian blur. And you can see now the effect is blurred. And of course, you've still got the underlying layer. So if you want to continue with it, obviously you've got that one. You can always duplicate that if you want to duplicate it. And also, of course, what you can do, deselect all that, or maybe just select it. You can also go to layer and new adjustment layer and go down to choose one of these hsl and then change the settings you can see the colors will change then now that will work on top of everything that's under the, under that adjustment layer so you will be able to change the color it doesn't matter that it's not in a sense doesn't really exist as a pixel layer that doesn't matter when it comes to adjustments. But it's just when it try to apply a live filter effect, etc., it will not work in the way if it's just a fill layer. So you've got these layers of complexity, and you can of course add additional ones. You can always then go to layer again, maybe just add or just duplicate it again. But you can also go to layer and new fill layer. Again, go over here, bitmap. And now, of course, what you could have done, you could Maybe have three or four of these PNG files. Don't have to have just one. You maybe could have coloured it, applied some effects, etc. So you can select that and open. And again, you've got that design and you can... Now, because it's below the adjustment, you can see it's also coloured. Now, you might want that. You might not. If you don't want it coloured like that and you want it above the other one, just simply select it and then just drag. And now it will be on top. You can see you can move that around. Now I've got this locked. So you've got up here, if you go up here, maintain fill aspect. Personally, I generally always like that. However, you can just deselect that. 
And once you've done that, you can then create, obviously, elliptical designs. And you can resize that as well. So you can stretch it out and create sort of like these nice lines. Of course, you can still rotate and squeeze it to create some nice line effects. Now, if you don't want these other layers, of course, you can always just get rid of them. Just deselect them. So you've got your design there. So you can see you can create all kinds of amazing designs. Now, what you can also do, of course, once you finish this, you don't want them anymore. As that, simply merge visible or rasterize it again. So you've got your design there. It's been, there you've got that one on top. Don't want that one, that fill one. I want to work with the pixel layer. Don't want to work with fill because fills are useful, but they're, they're nice to keep. So I, you could delete them, just go down the bottom, just delete them. But it's really best to work if you want the end result with pixels, especially if you want to apply effects and things. So go to layer and new live filter layer and you've got a whole range of different effects here. Or maybe go to your filter menu and distort and deform. And then of course what you can do, you can just add some pins there and you can distort your design there. So you can create some very weird and wonderful designs simply using that. Now, of course, I've been using this design. I'm just going to go now back to that 3D design. There's the 3D design. Oops, click apply. So you've got your design there. And of course, you can always still continue to work on that and create it, modify it in numerous other ways, maybe add additional bevels, etc. 3D effects to it. Up to you. So hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always have new tutorials about Finty Photo, Finty Designer, Painter, Photoshop, Illustrator, loads of other things of Creative Cloud, Critter, and probably a few more. Any uh, comments? Always appreciate it. What things have I done right? What things have I done wrong? What more things would you like to see me try and run through? I must admit, I'm not going to say that every single feature is particularly known, but uh, I'm always willing to try and work things out and see if I can create a video on most subjects. Also, a dislike or like. That's always appreciated. Thank you much.